with the demand for better network coverage increasing day by day. It is the need of the hour to densify Jio's network throughout. It is in this regard the outdoor small cell deployment is done across cities and towns to strengthen the existing Jio network and add to its capacity. E Node B sector carrying high traffic should be targeted for capacity decongestion. Under such congested E Node B sector, multiple outdoor small cells have to be planned to offload congestion. The outdoor small cell should be planned and directed in the fringe area of congested E Node B sector in order to increase indoor coverage and throughput. Outdoor small cell can be mounted on a rooftop pole or wall or parapet and should be installed at a height of 6 to 9 meters above ground level. The height needs to be verified from the planning data before proceeding with the installation. This video will give you an overview of how outdoor small cell deployment is done and the key tasks and steps associated with its installation. Before starting with the deployment process, it is important that the required material and kit is collected from the warehouse and verified with the planned bill of quantity. The bill of quantity will comprise of following Outdoor Small Cell Outdoor Small Cell IRM GPS Antenna and Cable L2 Switch SFP Module UBR Power Cable C3 Cable Grounding Cable Utility Box Power System Lithium Ion Battery Alarm Gateway Before the small cell deployment, we need to check for clear access and permission of the site from the site owner. Also ensure that necessary camouflaging arrangements are made so that the small cell sites post deployment are aesthetically pleasing. These are a few outdoor small cell camouflaging options. Camouflage tree, jardin, planter, avalon column, AC extension box, AC, signage, pedestal. Additionally, check and verify the planned locations of components such as poles, utility box and earth pit. With regards to deployment, the following guidelines are extremely important. The small cell doesn't face any obstruction whatsoever as it will hamper signal transmissions. Ensure that the height and orientation of the small cell as planned. Ensure that small cell is not facing any macro site. Ensure that the serving area should be overlooking a dense clutter and the small cell should not be facing each other. Ensure and verify the orientations of all the planned small cells at each site. Additionally, check and verify that the space for pole and utility box is clear of obstructions and easily accessible for operations and maintenance purposes. Before the deployment is done, you must also check for raw power tapping location. This will help in identifying the length of power cable required. Domestic power tapping is preferred from the landowner with proper agreement. For exceptional cases wherever commercial electricity is required, independent EB connection needs to be applied. And lastly, the space for earth pit should be as per the guidelines and must not be far away from the utility location. Earth pit is required for proper grounding of the equipment and protection against the electrical surges. Make sure to follow these earth pit guidelines. Another important point to remember before the outdoor small cell deployment is to ensure that the technician is well equipped with the protective gear such as helmets, gloves, hardness and safety shoes and follows all the required safety guidelines. Backhaul Feasibility Backhaul is the transmission link between the small cell and the core network. There are two types of backhaul options available for outdoor small cells, fiber and UBR. Fiber backhaul will be used as default transmission link. However, in case where fiber backhaul is not feasible, 
we will use UBR as backhaul transmission link. We now begin with the utility box installation. The installation can be on a ground-based pole, base or wall mounted. Now you need to install the power system in the utility box. After the power system is installed, you need to install the battery in the utility box and connect it to the power system. Ensure that you check the correct polarization connectivity of battery terminals. Now by using a bracket inside the utility rack, install the L2 switch. Remember to terminate the L2 switch power cable to DC port of the power system. Now install fiber distribution panel inside the utility rack. Connect the patch cord from the fiber distribution panel to the L2 switch. Now let's look at how the outdoor small cell installation is undertaken. Unbox the outdoor small cell and its IRM. Install the bracket on the small cell. Thereafter, mount the small cell on the pole as per the plan. We now need to lay the power and C pre cables for the small cell. Lay the cables through the conduit pipe from the small cell up to the utility rack. To do so, first connect the power cable to small cell. Next, insert the power cable inside the utility rack and terminate to the AC port of the power system. Now, connect the C pre cable to the small cell. Lay the CPRE cable till the utility rack and terminate to the L2 switch using optical SFP. Now for the GPS installation, take the GPS cable of appropriate length and assemble the connectors. Mount the GPS antenna on the pole overlooking the sky and connect the GPS cable with the other end terminated to the small cell. Ensure that the GPS antenna is free of any obstructions. The final process that will complete the outdoor small cell deployment is the UBR installation in case fiber backhaul is not feasible at the given site. Begin with checking for any obstructions in the UBR link between transmitter and receiver end. Clear line of sight is very essential between UBR link for maximum throughput. In case there is obstruction, then increase the height of UBR for clear line of sight. Now, install the UBR on the pole and orient it towards the desired sight. Install the POE inside the utility rack. Connect the Ethernet and power cable to the POE. And lastly, lay the cable from the utility rack to the UBR. Post installation, switch on the power and check for the LED status on the power system. Also check the LED status on the small cells. But this isn't it all. The outdoor small cells deployment is only complete when the site acceptance process is completed. So, you need to ensure that the site acceptance is completed by filling all the criteria given in the ATP 11A form in the site forge. This would include details such as MAC address and serial number of equipments, pictures of the installation location and other site details to be updated. Post clearance of debris and before leaving the site, don't forget to get concurrence from the customer. We hope that the above guidelines will be helpful for your installation process. 
Thank you.